EFBs and flight bags are nothing new, but do you need a tablet or an iPad to be successful in your flight training? Let's talk about it. and we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. In 2010, Steve Jobs and Apple announced the iPad, a device that was to bridge the gap between iPhone, laptop, and to expand the Apple iOS ecosystem. While tablets were nothing new, the iPad changed user habits and reinvented how we interact with our devices. At the initial launch, there was a bit of skepticism of a device that looked like an oversized iPhone with many similar features. While average consumers debated whether or not to integrate iPads into their daily life, pilots adopted the device very quickly. At the end of 2010, there were many electronic flight bag applications available, most notably ForeFlight. These apps brought aeronautical charts, airport data, and weather data all directly into the cockpit in a very convenient form factor that almost matched the kneeboard most pilots had already. Plus, using the iPad's built-in GPS, pilots could have aircraft position displayed on charts bringing modern conveniences to any aircraft. This was not the first time an Apple device had made progress in the EFB market either. In 1995, the Apple Newton PDA had an EFB application that brought much of the same airport data and capabilities, albeit without GPS. Other tough book-like devices were also widely used in flight decks at airlines for performance calculations and aeronautical data. The iPad revolutionized pilot's cockpit management and in the last 10 years has become a staple of most every flight bag from airline pilot to weekend warrior. Since 2010, iPads have come in a variety of dimensions from the original letter size to the mini and the giant pro models. Now with more additions, we have ADS-B weather and traffic streamed directly to our kneeboard. We can connect directly to aircraft uploading flight plans and share mission critical data. It is becoming hard to remember the days of sectional sunshades and reorganizing my airway manual with each mailed edition. But the question comes up for almost every person in flight training. Should I be using an iPad? It may not be as simple as it seems. Yes, but at the right time. Let's start with the student pilot. No, you should not be using an iPad during your initial training. Your job is to learn the fundamentals of flying an aircraft. This includes learning navigation, performance calculation, and developing other essential skills that you will need to continue into more advanced training courses. If you use an EFB every day while you try to learn, the answer will always be present with little effort, resulting in a lack of learning the basics. Imagine taking your basic math classes in elementary school with a graphing calculator. You would have never learned times tables or any of the other basic skills you use every day. Maybe you'd be a lot better using a graphing calculator in algebra but would not be able to understand how the answer is being generated, or most importantly, detect when it was wrong. After earning your private certificate, an EFB starts to make more sense. During your instrument training, the need for more charts makes the digital platform more practical. Being able to pull up any chart or airport's data any time becomes an indispensable tool. You will be interacting with flight plans regularly, making online filing easier and faster with an iPad. You will have an entire library of text with you at any time as you continue into advanced topics. Functions like ADS-B traffic and weather can help keep your situational awareness high throughout challenging flights. You will be more aware of the skills you need to develop and can decide to do things manually to keep skills sharp or be highly flexible during challenging training environments. It is important during instrument and commercial training to view the tablet as a tool, not a crutch. 
While having your aircraft position displayed on an approach plate is convenient and can enhance pilot situational awareness, it is very important to still practice without it. Remember, these are consumer products, not redundant avionics suites. Things can go wrong, batteries die, and sometimes devices overheat, leaving you to rely on those fundamental skills that needed to be developed during your initial training. Also, it is very important to understand the limitations of these EFBs. These are tools of convenience and to enhance our situational awareness, not for any type of primary navigation. At the end of the day, pilots have been flying aircraft without iPads or tablets for 100 years. There's no doubt that EFBs have found their place into the modern flight bag, but there's no substitute for the fundamental skills that pilots have relied on throughout history. So tell us what you think. Leave it in the comments below, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.